I decided I was going to go ahead and do this in two parts. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is lay out a clean mat where I can mold these in uh, silicone and do them separately. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is on the underside where the jaw hinges, I'm going to take a knife and put some score marks there. Like so. Because I want, when I do mold this, I want to be able to put some grooves in where I put epoxy putty in there and it will line up with the other piece and it'll be like a, a, a setting where it will uh, fit. So all I'm doing is I'm not doing anything just more than making score lines on the inside of the jaw with a knife. So when I do take the epoxy glue and the putty, it'll sink in there and it'll grip a little bit better. Get all the extra clay out of there. It's a nice warm day, so I'm out here on my bike shorts and the shirt. It actually went from 20, 30 degrees yesterday to about 50, 60 today. So, I'll put that aside there. And then I'm going to score these like so. Now these are not interlocking groove marks that will like, you know, uh, plug into each other. I'm just doing channels. So I give the epoxy glue somewhere to sink into. And when I push it together, it creates a more of a, of, of a stronger bond for the two pieces when they go together. I don't know where I learned this, if I if I if I if I saw it in a video or if I just thought of it or what, but it just came to me and, 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 and as an idea. And I thought, you know what, I've not done that, I'm gonna try it. And I can't honestly say if this is something I thought of myself or if I saw it in a video, because I can't recall if I did or what video if I did see it in the video where it came from. I don't know if anybody else has done it this way themselves. Okay. Now, we measure out our silicone. I'm going to silicone this one first, and then silicone this one second. And it's going to be a two-part brush-on mold. Um, I'll put this back here for a minute. Get me a measuring cup. And then I'll have to uh, <coughs> drop in cups. <clears throat> I'll have to uh, measure out the silicone. Tear this out to zero. Then I'm going to measure out my silicone. I probably won't need... I wouldn't think more than two, three hundred ounces. I don't know. I 
probably about five, six hundred ounces maybe. Seven, 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 seven. I'm going to go right there with seven. Woo-wee. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. There we go. That's 751 ounces. So I need 75 ounces of that gummit. Seven hundred fifty-one. So I need seventy-five ounces of this um, catalyst. Okay. I'm about to, to order some more of this. Put 75 of these in here. Woo! You know what? I'm just going to go flat 100 just to be safe. There we go. Just to make sure. The only thing it will do if I have too much catalyst, it will set up quicker. And that's not a bad thing. Okay, let me grab a stick. And a brush. And we'll get to mixing this up. <clears throat> get a clean stick. And mix this up. I'm using quite a bit of silicon. This may or may not be enough. I don't know. I'm gonna find out if it is. But I was kind of debating, you know, how to do it, and then I thought, you know what? If I do make this a two-piece mold, all I need is some epoxy sculpt, epoxy putty. And glue to put the two pieces together plus there's going to be a board in the back part of it it's just going to be a little piece of wood but it's going to be solid lightweight uh, resin uh, resin cast with foam filling in it I thought to have an open mouth back just because I don't know, just because nobody's ever done one with an open mouth back on it before. So, you know, I just didn't want to put the wood in there and the backing, put a solid piece of wood down the back, and then have that contrast the uh, open mouth paint job. So I thought, you know what, why not just have an open mouth and just leave it hollow? You know, if, if somebody wants to use it for a flower planter or what have you, they can do that. Or if they want to do it for a wall hanger, they can do that. You know, but it's open mouth. It's not going to have a bottom in it. So... To mix this silicone up really well. <laughs> make sure I've got it thoroughly mixed. And it's going to be a brush on, which is what I do with about 90. All right. In case y'all miss out, uh, about 95% of the things I do a brush on is a fairly large. So. <clears throat> Being a nice day out here, I thought, you know, I've been sitting on this thing procrastinating for about a week. I might as well just get it done and get it over with. 
because I'm not doing anything but sitting around the house playing Skyrim and watching TV and just nothing because of cold weather and all that and, you know, being miserable because I can't be on Facebook, I can't interact, I can't do anything. So I might as well quit being depressed and get out here and be productive. You know. So that's the objective. Be productive. I think I got this mixed up pretty well. And I need to get a new shirt. I don't know if you guys seen my shirt. It says Eat a Dick 2020. Well, I need one that says Eat a Dick 2022. Because I think it's going to be a bad year. It's going to be what I make of it, but you know what? With all the political stuff and everything going on, it, it, it's not going to be a productive year for, for many people. Okay, now I'm going to take this and layer this on here. And then I'm also going to brush it up and down. Because I've got poor detail nostril detail, all kinds of detail that I want to get in here. So, and I'm putting a thicker layer on top just to coat it and cover it. And Ale, I've got your shark boxed out. I got some Christmas money in, money in yesterday. I'm going to go ahead and probably send that out to you. And you can just pay me whenever you get it. Whenever you can. I trust you. I know you're good for it. And you could look like you could use some cheer me up. So I'm going to go ahead and send that out to you. Let me know if it's to go to you. Probably go to your brother's address, right? I'll send it to your brother's address. <laughs> Sorry I didn't tag you in this. Kind of got out here and forgot. <clears throat> but see, I'm just moving this around as I go, and just going side to side, up, down, like paint the fence, Miyagi style, up, down, side, side, up, down, side, side. I've already binge watched Cobra Kai, and I hear tell there's another two seasons left for Cobra Kai. So I'm very excited about that. Looking forward to that. Now I've got this on silicone mat because silicone's not going to stick to it. But it's something I can keep it off the table with and keep it clean and clear on. I'm just going to brush the silicone in here with this paintbrush. And this will probably be a two, maybe three layer, a two layer, possibly three layer thing, because it's going to be plaster bandaged as well. Now these, ladies and gentlemen, will not be cheap. They'll likely be at about the $400 range for this piece because of the amount of resin that will be used for it. It's fairly large. It's going to be about an inch thick all the way around. Um, <clears throat> so 
I'm going to make sure that these are going to be very durable so I don't get another Christmas Karen situation where somebody drops it and they want a refund. I'll be like, nope, sorry. There are absolutely no refunds on these. You won't break it because I'm going to ensure that it doesn't get broken like the other one did. The one that I have to send to Mr. Tucker. Or the one that I am going to send to Mr. Tucker, not the one that I have to. I don't have to do anything, but he's the guy that gets all my defective pieces I can't sell. So, you know. Special friend of mine. So, you know, he kind of gets it. And he helped me out from time to time as well, not just purchasing stuff, but making stuff for me, or showing me how to make stuff. He's a craftsman as well. Just rotating this all the way back around. Silicone is, is such a versatile subject, uh, material, it will pick up any and all detail, no matter how you apply it, as long as it's pressed into whatever it is that you're applying, applying it with. Now, see, I have to go on the inside and outside of these teeth to make sure they get covered and coated on both sides. So I go over the top of them with a silicone and it dangles and it dangles and drips but it doesn't matter because there's going to be an undercoating on the other side on the bottom. Because the inside so I go on the inside of here I brush the silicone in there too on the inside of the mouth oh my god what are you doing how are you gonna get off it peels off peels back like a glove Worst case, I can cut it, but I will cut it from the inside, not the outside. Because if there's a seam on the inside of the mouth, you can't see it. If there's a seam on the outside, you can. So that's the trick. If I have to cut this and, and cut it and peel it back, the inside will, the seam will come from the inside of the mouth where it can't be seen. But I don't reckon I will have to do that. I'm having to put this in here to make sure that I get this gooped in nice and good all on the bottom, thickly on the sides. See, the details on the inside don't matter too much as the outside, so I can put this in thicker on the inside. And it has natural, the sculpting has natural keys in it, where the grooves of the inside of the mouth, the channels where the gill slits are and stuff, those make natural keys for the sculpt.
Well, this is where I've got to get in here and get this silicone up in here in the metal. And then I just pull that back over the teeth and cover the teeth yet again. And oh my God, it's dripping, it's messy, it's so, it's covered. They are covered. Thou art covered. So I put it inside the mouth, take the brush, bring it up, it covers the inside, the outside, then I just brush it over the top. And that gives an extra coat on top. It allows me to have this placement for the teeth as one piece of a part. So the silicone of the teeth will essentially be one piece. Now I'm going to layer a more on top of this for the next coat, but I just want to make sure to show you guys that as well. Then also take your stick and trowel, smooth it out. That's another key thing. That way you can make sure that you've got it all covered and it's smooth. That way there's no air bubbles, there's no mess spots, there's no pockets or anything like that. Just come along and push this in there and make sure it's all good and goopy and everything. Shall it up a bit. Now we'll finish this off right here. Let me get this and then I'll do the slow one. Turn this pad a little bit. I'm going to work this in for the gills, making sure that the gill detail gets in there. And my glasses don't want to stay up on my face. And you can use a tin cell catalyst with a tin cell silicone. It doesn't matter what silicone it is, as long as the base is the same, you can use said catalyst. You got platinum. That's a different ball game. The platinum silicone comes with a different kind of catalyst. Tin thick, cat, uh, tin thick catalyst is a little bit different than silicone, platinum silicone catalyst. The 
I'm trying not to waste a lot of silicone here. I'll start brushing on this. I'm getting this in here. So I brush the tongue. Make sure I get all those lines and everything in there. You can do a print coat and a, and a top coat at the same time. You just got to work it in. I want to be careful in around the teeth so, you know, I don't break them off. So I'm going to just sipple this in around the teeth like so and just let that kind of get in there. And stipple that in there for the teeth. So I don't break the teeth. I don't want to put too much pressure and break the teeth on the lower jaw. So I'm putting it on a little thick, but I'm stippling it in there. And it is going in there and it is coating and covering it. But it's doing it where I think I've used too much silicone, so I'm going to have to put some more on here so I don't waste this. <clears throat> so I'm just stabbing it with the brush and the silicone to get in the teeth thickly and it's not creating any air pockets because I'm moving it in there and getting it in. Simply, but being careful because even though it's oil based clay and it's been sitting for about a week and it's good and dry and hard, I still don't want to risk putting too much pressure and breaking the teeth. I'm just brushing up a layer behind that, kind of coat and cover their teeth. Hopefully the scene won't flip over on me. And I've got ton more silicone. I've got to, I've got to <clears throat> thicken this up quite a bit. It's always good to have more than you need than not enough. Although with silicone, if you mix another batch and put it on there, it won't matter, it'll stick to it. Silicone will stick to itself. I need to check something real quick. I'm going to stir this one more time because I'm finding a small pocket of white silicone in here and a bubble that didn't get mixed up. 
so I got to make sure that's all stirred up. And dang them, my glasses don't quit trying to slide off my face. Okay, it's just a little pocket on the bottom where the silicone is kind of not mixed. And it's just a little bitty pocket, not much, but I did get some in there and I have to stir it in and mix it in with the other one so it'll mess with that catalyst and cure. Otherwise you get a pocket of uncured silicone, creates a bubble. And then when you go to demold it and pop, and then you leave an air pocket and bubble in your mold. And that's not good. <clears throat> My daggum glasses. I'm just why I hate these glasses at once. Slide off my face and slide off my nose. Now, normally I wouldn't be trying to do it all at once, but I did make a fairly large batch of silicone, so I have to try to use all of it instead of wasting it because it's expensive stuff. Over $400 for a five-gallon bucket, and you do not want to cock fucking glasses. I hate this shit. Do not want to waste it. And I've got two gallon, ten gallons of stuff. Probably about five and a half, five, five, six, maybe seven gallons left. A one full five gallon thing, and then probably maybe a half or three quarter, uh, quarter of a uh, bucket over here, a uh, five gallon bucket over here behind me. Well, the way things are going now, materials are not going to get cheaper, people. Trust me. Current president has made sure that we are not going to live cheaply for the next four years or three years. So it's going to be a rough road for everybody. I don't care how good of an artist you are. You're going to have a rough two, three years ahead of you. Sales this year are probably not going to be as good as last year or the year before. If they are, I'll be surprised. I think it's gotten to where between now and say 2025, it's going to be a lean, mean time for artists. I mean, you know, for those of us like myself and a couple other people I know that do this full time, and this is your only source of income, um, 
we may be forced to go back in the labor market, job market or something, and get a job. Uh, you know, if they don't push that vaccine mandate on everybody, yep, we're going to have them do it, probably. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to say that life is going to be sucking for everybody, but as much as we'd like to say well wishes and all that stuff and look positive and everything, I really don't see it. Not a ton of it anyway. There might be spurts here and there, but I'm going to be hella surprised if it's going to be a a bona fide year for anybody. I know artists out there that have been suffering for the last 20 months and their production got cut 70%. 70%. I mean, it took a major hit. And they've had to quit. They can't afford to do this full time. So, not me. I will not give up. And that's not giving up. It's just you got to do what you got to do. You know, you got to go back in the workforce and you got to do what you got to do. Me, I'd plunge your head and just say, you know what? I'm going to do what I do. And that's it. You know, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. If I gotta be, if I'm forced to go back to work, fine. But I'm not gonna take that cootie bug shit, shot and all that shit. I'm not doing that because the jobs and stuff think you're expendable and you're just another number, and they don't give a shit if you live or die. But in order to keep there. Profits and line and all that shit, they're going to fucking make everybody do this shit. And I'm like, nope, you're not making me do a damn thing. And here's what I don't understand. If these companies are suffering because nobody's buying the product... And how the hell are they able to hire and tell people what to do and all that shit? And people are going to work to make money to keep their bills paid and stuff, yet these companies can't sell anything because nobody's working or they're not, their production isn't up. And I'm referring to my job, my, my former job at, at, at a certain place that they can't keep people hired. Because, A, they don't train people how to do stuff right. B, they won't hire anybody who already knows how to do it. And when they do, they don't pay them what that person's experience is worth. They pay them same as everybody else. And it's like, wait a minute. I bring experience, knowledge to the table. I can make your production line run faster. I know quick and efficient methods of how to do this. Oh, no, you have to do it the way we do it. No ifs, ands, or buts, you know. But your production would go up. Your production would go up. You get product out quicker, faster. Turnaround times are shorter. You have less complaints about uh, production value and all that other stuff. Oh, no, we have a certain way we like to do it. Everybody must do it this way. No, well, all right, fine, fuck you then. Because when I was there... And I was in that mold room by myself because the guy that I was working with was sick with a cootie bug. I had to turn these production molds inside out, backwards and forwards, and upside down in record time. And I did. And I got out so far ahead of them, they were like, oh, well, we can't keep up. Well, I, you know, nobody's asking you to keep up with me. Just keep it coming so when it comes in, I can get it ready to go on the line. You want to get out quickly, efficiently, and 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 that's the bottom line, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, then fucking 
Booth, get out of my way. Let me do it. But they wouldn't do it because I, a different way than they knew how, and I was getting it done quicker than they had done. And there was guys in there that had been in there 20, 30 years that saw it and said, yeah, that works, but that's not how I do it. Okay, well, then you go do what you do over there. I'll do what I do over here. And we'll make it work together. Oh, no, 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 no. What the fuck? And it, it, it's always somebody out there who's going to come up with a different way of doing the same thing. And it's going to get it's going to get the same results. Same results. You just don't like how quickly somebody's doing something because it's it shows you up, or you think it makes you look bad. I'm not trying to be a show off, I'm trying to get shit done. And I single handedly had that fucking mold room caught up with the production molds. I was ready to work on the stuff that needed to be fixed and repaired, which was stocking up in the back. But they were like, oh, uh, uh, we need two people for that. Really? Why? I managed to do all this shit by myself. Take me like three molds, four molds a day. Fix it. Get it done. Those were brand new molds too. Make them four molds a day. Then they were like, oh, we got all these that we want to fix that are old that need to be redone. Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. Come on. Bring them. Line them up. Patch them up. Line them up. Let me get them. All right, boom, did that. I was doing probably about six or seven a day by myself. Three or four new ones, about six or seven old ones. Boom, knocking them out. Not taking breaks or anything to pour because you can't, once you start pouring your thing rubber, you can't stop in the middle of it because it'll set up on you. You've got to keep a constant flow of rubber going when you're making pours because it will set up on you. And if it sets up on you, it makes the inner mold weak and you can't, you can't, uh, press foam in it. It's gotta be, it's gotta be thick. And I would do uh, uh, matrix molds on these, but they're so small, it's easier to do brush up. Big things, you want to do matrix molds on. But I don't do silicone jackets on the big stuff. I should. I could. This is about as large as I go with a jacket. For anything except on, on resin, if, unless I make one of these things a resin piece, which I don't do much anymore because of the amount of resin it takes to do that. So, my glasses are really pissing me off because they don't want to stay on my face. I'm down to the last bit. I'm going to pour some more on here. 
just to make sure I get this in good and coated. Then I'm going to leave it, and that's going to be it. And then I'll come back out tomorrow or something and get another coat on there, but, you know, and then jacket it. Let's see if I'm going to need anything on the inside of the mouth, probably. I need a little bit more on the inside of the mouth. So sorry for rambling and ranting about that, but, you know, it's like artists on Facebook and Instagram. You know, there's some guys that are really good at what they do, and they're talented, but I think some of them let it get to their heads, because if you go to share some insights about something or ask or, you know, ask a, ask a question like, how do you think I'd approach this? You know, just see what they say. And they tell you and you're like, yeah, I thought about that. What about this? You know, you find a problem with it. And they're like, well, that's never happened to me. And I'm like, are you using the same product, the same techniques, the same method? Nope. And that's what, that's what, that's what different. You can use the same that can cause a problem, or it can be a benefit. Depends on how you approach it. I have a friend of mine who's autistic. I really don't know if I say friend, acquaintance, acquaintance. He's in one of the mold groups. He's autistic. And he sees things from that perspective. And if you question it and say something about it different from what he's doing, he comes on here and then goes into, oh, you need the chemistry and bio biomolecular makeup and all this stuff. And I'm like, that's not going to get, nobody understands that stuff. You know, you can't talk in levels way above people's heads. You gotta break it down to the simple things. That's why I like showing people what I do. Because if you talk to them and you try to tell them, here's how you do it, they can't, I even I can't understand that a lot of the time. You know, it's difficult to understand when somebody's telling you what to do or how to do it. You have to show people so that's why I like doing this, and my wife says you should get paid for it. Well, you know, I just went to a job and did a job for a few months that they paid me to do it, and it didn't work out. Why? Because then yeah, I was doing it too good of a job. And it's like, well, you know what? People that have been there for six years, seven years, and they're working at a, at a certain pace, yet they've got them working on the weekends because there's too much work. And I'm like, I want some time off. I'm going to play catch up so we don't have to come in on the weekend because, you know, I might have a convention planned. And if it's mandatory, I come in on the weekend because. We got too much work, and I miss that convention because of that. Nope. Ha. Uh -uh. Not happening. I will make sure we don't have to come in on the weekends. And you think they'd be grateful, but no. It's the way things work for so long, and they're so used to doing it. And you come in and disrupt the flow of shit. And I'm like, wouldn't you rather be with your family for the weekend instead of in here doing this? I mean, I enjoy doing it whether I get paid for it or not, but, you know. But they can't see it that way. 
because the production and, and, and all that stuff's got to be a certain number and all that stuff. And I'm like, then why don't you strive to make it that? Why complain and bitch and bellyache because it's not? Quit bitching and bellyaching and make it that way. Let somebody help you get your production up, get your numbers up, and do it. But nope, they're afraid it's going to make them look bad. That's the whole thing. It's arrogance and pride and this shit that people just can't see beyond that. And they think, oh, I know what I'm doing. You know, I've been doing it for X amount of years and X amount of time. Yeah, that's great. But you know what? I do the shit at home. And I do it for myself. And I'm a one-man shop, one-man production team. So, hey, I think I know how it works, too. You got 11 people in here trying to do this shit. And none of them are getting it done. That's the problem. Too many people trying to do the same thing. Anyway, I'm in the rambling. I think I'm done. I've got this covered all the way around. I may need to come out and do another layer, but uh, I've got all the silicone on here. None in the bucket. All gone. All on here. Although the other layer of silicone will stick to it, I'm going to smooth it out. And then we'll plaster bandage it. Uh, plaster bandages are about the quick, easiest way to do a mother mold on these things without wasting a whole ton of materials. They are cheap, easy, and efficient. And there again, you can also do things like use buckets. When I've got something like a piece like this size, I can take a bucket, same shape. Let's say this is a bucket. Alright? Take a bucket, put that in a bucket, and it holds it while you're messing, slossing around. That's what I did with the Godzilla. I have an oval shaped bucket over there that I slosh that around, put the resin in there, put it in there, and then wiggle it around to do all that stuff. And I don't have to worry about, you know, the mold slipping and all that stuff. Or pushing it or pressuring it or anything. Oh, God, dog it. Well, I'm drying up. It didn't pull off of the, the uh, thing, so. All right, well, boys and girls, that is it. Um... Yeah, I gotta get this cleaned up, but I'm gonna let that dry. And that is it. So we've got these two heads molded. Get another layer on there, put the plaster bandage on here, pull that off. This will be a one piece. I'm thinking this is gonna be a two piece side mold with a plaster bandage, maybe a front and back. I don't know. Um,. I'm more concerned with this one, this than I am this. This is easy, because that's just a one little light, you know, slush mold. That's not a big deal. I can do these all day long. Only thing is, now I'm seeing, the look at this. Silicone is not covering the teeth. It's starting to slump on the tips of the teeth. Well, guess what? Go back in there and just take some silicone and dip it on there and cover them. Cover them, cover them, cover them. Gotta get them covered. <clears throat> All 
That's another good thing about the silicone. It stays vertical. It doesn't slump. But I do have a little bit here that's decided that it's not going to cover the tips of the teeth. And I didn't notice that while I was stippling it down. Print code anyway. And you got to remember, this is not frosting, so do not lick this stuff, do not eat it. It smells like mint because it's got formaldehyde in it, but do not. Do not pretend this is cake frosting and put it in your mouth. You'll poison yourself. All right, well, that's going to be that. I'll get out, and it'll cover a second layer. We'll cover that. Anyway, yep, shut. See, here we go. I've got some right here I can do that with. Got a little bit of slump right here that was just There we go. I was pulling away, so I don't want to mess with it too much, but I'm going to try to get this off the bottom. I've got a little bit caked on the bottom here. That it's not quite dried yet, but it's thick enough that if I need to smooth it out and smear it on here and cover it and coat some stuff, I can get it done. It starts pulling away. That's where you want to leave it alone. It's tacky. All right. That is it. I am going to clean up here. And let that be it for the moment. I'll go through the process for this on how it comes apart, uh, how it gets cast, uh, what happens to it when it gets molded, that type of thing. About the same as Godzilla. Um, I'll give you an example. I've got one right here. This is an outer shell of <clears throat> resin on a Godzilla. Outer shell of resin, inner shell of foam. Now this is a master copy. So if anything happened in the mold and it broke, I'd have a a separate thing to, to mold off of. Um, but what it is, is it's going to be hollow like this on the top and the bottom. And then it's going to be filled with foam. And then the back part will have a little board right here inserted in the foam. That way it can be hung up. And it's not going to be a, it's going to be done in two pieces. It's just going to be a hollow, have a hollow backing on it. So, I don't have to worry about um, I don't have to worry about see if, if I put a piece of wood back there and you looked in the mouth you'd see that wood and I thought well then I have to paint the wood and then the wood would, wouldn't look like the rest of the inside of the mouth and I want to make these as realistic as possible so I thought you know what just put an open mouth, open back on it, and that way they can look and just, you know. It might change down the line. I don't know. Anyway, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Sorry I didn't get too interactive with you guys. Um, but I am going to uh, 
Uh, yeah, hey, I am going to put another uh, coat on the top of the head. Um, yeah, Brother Zach. Oh, my God. Brother Zach, what are you doing? I didn't even know you tuned in to my stuff. In case you're still watching, I love you, man. We need to get together. Seriously. I miss you. But, uh, anyway, that's pretty much it for now. I'm going to go in, have a little coffee. Let me play some more Skyrim. But it's a beautiful day out here. Actually, you know what? Y'all want to come with me? I'm going to feed some birds. How about that? You want to go feed some birds? Let's go feed some birds. It's a beautiful day out here. I got my shorts on. I'm in my bikies. Hi. Hi, you my birds. Hey. You guys ready to get fed? I'm playing water. Uh-oh. Get this on buckle. Come on, babies. Oh, look at that. Look at the pretty birds. The pretty birds. Hi, pretty birds. Hi, baby. Hi. Hi. Hi, baby. Hey, they're scared of me, but they're, they know I feed them, so they love me. This little son of a bitch is mean. Now, rooster, you jump up here, and you go in the soup and get them hens in here. And y'all laying eggs and making babies. Fuck with me. Go on. I dare you. Jump up and fuck with me one time when I got my back turned. See what I do. See what I do. I'll bust you in your ass. The ducks don't do nothing. They, 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 they mess with the rooster. Rooster used to be king shit around here. We had when we had chicken, but now look at it. So, not here in the charge anymore. Hey, watch out, baby. All right. Okay. Here we go. Y'all want to get out of there? Come on, get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Ah, make it rain out here. Make it rain. 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 It's raining food all over the ducks. Woo! Okay. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Quit. Oh my god. Now get them worms up out of there too. Uh, only eight degrees there? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, it's about 50, 60 degrees, something out here. It's nice. Not summer weather, but definitely spring weather. I imagine, Ale, since you're up in the Dakotas, it is definitely bad weather up there. Hi, hi, the birds. This is my favorite right here. Now we're twins, so we're two. There's a pair of each, and we're a pair of these. One of them died. I say that's about the only time I ever get to pet them is when they're eating, and that's where they. Bad birds, bad birds. Look at birds. Look, I'm pretty birds. I'm puggy birds. And this is Ethel. First one I ever got. You're getting to be an old lady. An old big red here. So I think she's in charge. You ain't in charge of shit. And the only thing I was depressed about the whole the other day was we had five baby goats born. No, not five. Three. Three baby goats were born. 
One was dead, stillborn. The other two made it, but a certain dog got out and decided he wanted to play with them and thought they were like little except to go in the house and to eat. That's it. He stays if we don't have any more baby goats. He stays in the in the backyard. Hi guys. For the babies, for them babies, for them babies. You making them babies? There's now a milk goat because she had she was the one that had twins and that got messed with her. Accidentally killed. We need to make him babies. We need to make him babies. We need to make him babies. Yes, you do. And I'm barefoot. And the shorts and shit. Yes. You want to get milk, don't you? That's what you want. You want to give me some of that titty juice? Give me some of that titty juice. Give me some of that titty juice. You get some of the titty juice. Tell my wife when she gets out the cookies ready to be milked. Little butt nugget right here. And the fudge. She's. I think maybe, maybe has a baby. Are you gonna have babies, fudge? I don't know who can. Then we got a little brown one running right through right there. She might have a baby. But I want to show you guys something. This is the one that had the baby that was stillborn. She's the oldest. She's going to notice something about her. Jack did a number on her. Got out. My wife thought, oh, notice anything about this goat? She doesn't have an ear. She has no ear. No ear at all. One ear. She's a no ear goat. And, uh, he just thinks they're toys and wants to play with them. You want to get milk, don't you? No, Jack. No. I love you, but you're not playing with these guys. No. No. Go on, Cookie. We'll get you later. All right. I will see you guys later. I'm just going to sit there and just... Well, I know. All right. We will see you guys later. I appreciate it.